We've all seen images of Mexico's Day of the Dead, whether it be people in skull costumes or sugar skulls like this, or even just seen films such as The Book of Life or Coco. But beauty aside, what is the Day of the Dead? What is it celebrating? Stick around to find out. One thing you might not know about me is I have an interest in the culture and history of pre-Columbian peoples, especially in central Mexico. I've also been enamored by what some people call Mexican Halloween, or the Day of the Dead, or Dia de Muertos. The relationship between life and death, the skeletons, the partying in graveyards, something about it just seems so... Aztec. So I set out to the internet to find out what this holiday was all about and figure out why Mexicans and now people across the globe party in graveyards with their dead relatives every year in early November. The first day of the dead celebrations occurred in pre-Columbia in Mexico as a month-long ritual of celebrating the deaths of one's ancestors. The first observations we suspect occurred up to 3,000 years before the arrival of Columbus. The Aztec calendar's months were built around a certain festival which occurred each month and the precursor to the modern Day of the Dead happened on the ninth month or roughly in about August. These festivals not only honored their dead ancestors, but also paid homage to Mictacasiwa, Mik the queen of the underworld. The goddess keeps watch over the bones of the dead. Often, Aztec depictions of Mictacasiwa show her as a human flayed open. She's also suspected to be the indigenous root behind Santa Muerte, who would also be a great video idea, as she's this Grim Reaper, Virgin Mary, Catholic Saint hybrid, often worshipped by members of Mexico's urban working class. This resilient Mexican culture then began to mesh with the transplanted Catholicism from Spain when they arrived in Mexico in the 16th century. Rather than abandon their rites, rituals, and beliefs, there was a long struggle to compromise, integrate, and battle over different religious practices known by historians as the spiritual conquest of Mexico. This process even involved the first and only indigenous American to be killed by the Spanish Inquisition. It's a fantastic story, and if you want to hear it, ask down in the comments. One of the compromises during the spiritual conquest of Mexico was this day of reverence for dead ancestors. They could keep at least parts of the practice, but they meshed it with the Catholic holiday All Saints Day. It's quite similar to the origin of Halloween, just replace Aztec with Gaelic. This is why they both fall around the same time. The Day of the Dead is a two-day affair. The first day for honoring dead children, who they call the Angelitos, or Little Angels. The second day is for everyone else. Families go down and clean the graveyard where their ancestors are buried, and then decorate it with marigolds, toys for the Angelitos, tequila for the adults, and lots and lots of food. The food is traditionally things their dead relatives enjoyed in life, but also skull-themed pastries, little skulls made of candy and chocolate, and lots of tamales. The food is mostly an offering to the souls of their departed loved ones. The family usually consumes the food after some time, but they believe their ancestors have absorbed the nutrients of the food beforehand. They will swear to you the food has lost much of its flavor. In homes, churches, and even in schools and government buildings, families build atares or shrines, typically filled with skulls, food, Catholic holy objects, and photos of dead relatives. Some people might even write little poems called caraveras. These poems usually mock, tease, or tell funny stories about your friends and family. I had one friend from Mexico who said that his father's office would have these little comics that would come out during the Day of the Dead that would feature all the people who worked in the office but they were skeletons. You might also see lots of depictions of a 19th century high-class Mexican woman as a skeleton. This is La Calavera Catrina, created by Mexican artist Jose Guadalupe Posada. And of course, there are lots and lots and lots of skulls. This is a tradition which goes to the Aztec roots of the holiday, with the honoring of the goddess who watches over the bones of the dead. You see them all over ancient Aztec temples. In 2008, UNESCO declared it part of the global cultural heritage, and it has also become a public holiday in Mexico. But even before then, the Day of the Dead has been spreading around the world. Many countries in Latin America recognize some form of the Day of the Dead, and it's exploding in popularity. What makes this unique holiday to honor the dead so compelling? Well. First of all, there's just something so fun about Halloween, and I think Day of the Dead brings a Latin feel to a lot of places, many of which also have their own holidays to honor the dead they already observe. The second is just that the Day of the Dead is so quintessentially Mexican. The skulls, the Catholicism, the flowers, the music, many of the most beautiful and ancient parts of Mexican culture put on elaborate display. So, for Mexicans living abroad, 
I can imagine it's a great holiday to celebrate that culture. It's not surprising that Day of the Dead celebrations are popping up a lot in the United States, especially in places with large Mexican populations. Because this giant chunk of the United States used to be Mexican, these countries are exceptionally culturally intertwined. It's not a surprise at all the US would embrace something from a country which is so closely enmeshed in their own history. Maybe it's also because we have an unhealthy relationship with the dead. You don't need to spend too long watching Ask a Mortician to know our medicalized, sanitized approach to death just doesn't seem to sit right with anyone except those making money off of it. Grief is essential, and yet we don't ever see the other side of the tragedy. On the Day of the Dead, even if you don't believe it, you can go down to the graves and talk to those who've left us. And for a couple nights, reunite a family, at least in spirit. To have a relationship with death that has tragedy and grief, but also has laughter, candy, music, colors, flowers, it's, it's beautiful. Something we could use a bit more of.